Hey everybody, it's Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Betim. Hello. Yeah. Hello. It's it's great to have you. I'm trying to think, like you might be the first Albanian MVP that I've interviewed on this. I have to go back and check. Uh, but uh, I... that is correct. Even though I'm the first Albanian MVP ever, so oh, it would well, be there hard you to go. find <laughs> there you go. another one. Yeah, yeah. And lately, there are other two Albanian MVPs, but they live in Germany, so they uh, uh, yeah, count yeah. as German yeah. MVPs. Correct. But, yes. Uh, yeah, I'm the you... first and the only one currently. The the I'm Olympic... trying to the... help the local community in yeah. pursuing the same path, in a sense. I was going to say that the uh, the Olympic uh, uh, community, the judges, would have uh, found this to be correct that. You know, you you would you have to live in the country, the host country, you know, to to represent. Well, for folks that don't know you, who are you? Uh, we've already said where you are, but and what yeah. do you do? Yeah, so I am Betim Bea. I am working in the business applications area in the last uh, six years. Uh, I've been working as a developer for the last twenty years since uh, when I was at. High school, pretty much. I was doing side projects in the meantime. Uh, it was mainly focused on research and development. So it was pretty advanced things for a high school student. Mm -hmm. But it was also pretty rewarding for me because it uh, inspired me to look for the best practices and for the latest that the industry had to offer in the uh, development area. Uh, I was working initially with a gambling industry company. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, got a little bit tired of that uh, industry and I wanted to look for something more interesting. Uh, and I got to know the business applications, Microsoft Dynamics CRM, basically at that point. And I fell in love with the fact that you can make, create solutions for very different industries. And the challenges were always different. So every three months or six months, you could focus in another industry. So it never got boring, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's what I usually look for, uh, new challenges, uh, technical challenges, right? Not survival challenges. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> and, uh, six, six years is a long time to be within the space. I mean, I mean, e even then, I, I'm not in that the biz app space. Obviously, I like I've built some solutions, done things. I've interviewed a lot of people within the space, but I mean, I've seen from a community standpoint how fast that area is growing. I mean, what what was it like getting into the space? I mean, can you see a difference between the community six years ago and today? Oh, there is a lot of uh, difference. Obviously, the technical part where I'm mainly focused has evolved, but not that much. So you get the same way to write plugins and some automations. Uh, integrations are pretty much similar. Obviously, you have the custom connectors, but still there is a ASP.NET website to be built or a web API to be built. And that part is what I usually love. I try to enable basically the team in solving every, every challenge they face. Mm -hmm. And that's where the Pro professional developer is needed in the business applications area. Otherwise, like we have fusion teams where local developers or even other stakeholders give a lot of value to the project. But uh, obviously, there is always a need for a professional developer to make that solution 
be an enterprise solution, right. have the right ALM, have uh, the right collaboration and make everybody put the right value in the project. Uh, yeah. I have been focused a lot in PCF components, for example, in the last year and a half in the community contributions. Mm -hmm. And I've even created a test framework for, uh, I created the mock for the APIs of the component framework mm -hmm. so that users could write unit tests or write storybook stories. And that enables a whole lot of options for collaboration between uh, stakeholders, right? Even people that don't know how to code or uh, they are used to just configure a couple of parameters, they can play with your component in an isolated area and then they are able to find issues with that uh, component or give feedback like uh, possible areas of improvement, even though it might not have a real issue, but there might be something that the business user, let's say, which has more uh, valuable knowledge than the developer for certain processes, they can uh, make suggestions like, let's do this change in the component because I feel like it would add more value. Yeah. And all those things like are really hard tasks for a developer to understand or to uh, do in autonomy, right? Mm -hmm. So if you go with the official tooling of uh, PCFs, for example, the experience is pretty much limited to one single developer. With that library that I created, you can collaborate with multiple developers or with all stakeholders, basically, because you can publish that in an internal website and everybody can give the right feedback. You can mm -hmm. copy a URL, put it in a issue tracker, Jira, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you can go to that specific configuration of your component and see or experience it yourself, the issue or whatever, the improvement suggestion or whatever that was related to. So that's what I've tried to do on the developer side, right? Yeah. I also am focused a lot in trying to grow a community in Albania for mm -hmm. uh, focused in the power platform and the business applications. Yeah, how how is that and, going? I like I know it's for for folks that um, I, you know sometimes we uh, you know we don't appreciate the amount of work that goes into starting a community, much less maintaining running the community. A lot of us benefit from user groups and community activities that have been around for years and years and years. But when you don't have that history and that infrastructure and you're starting something from scratch, like it's really hard yeah. to go and do that. So before be becoming an MVP, basically I started a unofficial, let's call it user group in Albania. And the meetings were like five or six people usually. So it was a really small group. And then uh, I still try to do from time to time meetings with the user group. But as I mentioned, like there, there is not many people that are uh, coming to these meetings because most of them work uh, with the US. Mm -hmm. So, and we have a difference in the time zone of six or nine hours, depending on. Right which part of the US. And basically when we do those meetings out of hours, they are still working. So that's the main reason why most people don't come. Yeah. And uh, I, last year we organized the first basically Albanian Power Platform Summit together with Christian Fernandez, MVP from Spain mm -hmm. and Jordi Montana, which is an ex MVP and the creator of the fake XRM easy, which is the unit testing framework for dynamics. Mm -hmm. And fake XRM easy, uh, I have like a contributor of the year award here. I don't know if it's readable. I can see a little uh, bit of text up there, but no. Yeah. 
and uh, it's been the my first uh, love in the open source basically and it's the library that uh, made me love the open source contributions mm -hmm. and i'm still a contributor pretty much active uh, with that library even though now it has a dual triple license depending on if it's commercial or open source so it has changed a little bit from the mit license that was some time ago mm -hmm. and uh yeah we we organized this uh our platform summit in albania and we had uh 28 participants we had people coming from spain and from Germany as attendants. And we had four MVPs, active MVPs, uh, presenting in the, in the summit. We had two local speakers uh, also presenting there because I wanted to make it a little bit uh, inclusive, let's say, not only MVPs. Mm -hmm. uh, and this uh, October 26th, we are targeting to do the second edition. Uh, it is, uh, we, we don't have many sponsors. I'm fighting in a sense to get some sponsors because obviously it's, uh, we are organizing this as a community event with free attendance. So we need to Couple cover costs, a little bit right. of costs for the speakers, for the, event for a uh, little bit of marketing costs and yep. all all of those associated costs with an event right yeah and i'm i'm the local one uh, compared to christian so i'm trying to do the meetings with companies to ask for sponsorship and these things and obviously well, hey, if you want any advice on that i've i've helped organize a lot of events and uh, i i've done some things uh a little differently than what a lot of the other the, the regional events like uh, i've uh again i've been uh like, like you have I, I actually created three user groups we we formed a non-profit but this is 22 years ago i was running three different user groups at the same time and yeah. so finding sponsors and going and doing that, I've, I've learned some things about that. I'm happy to, you know, not in the, not in the recording, we could talk, but I'll you know, give you some, yeah. uh, some suggestions there. Yeah, obviously I need to also uh, consider that I'm part of the Albanian market and the legislation with sponsorships is almost non-existent. Yeah. So we are basically covering lots of costs as expenses on my own company. Yeah, I, and... I've been there as well. Yeah, I actually went and formed a nonprofit just to help regional events in the Western U.S. collect the funds. I took care of you know covering taxes, organizing yeah. all of that, just to to be able to do that. So yeah, very very familiar with that. Um, yeah, that's the yeah. side I think that people don't understand um, a lot of what happens on the back end of making these free community events happen. Like there's cost. It's yeah. it's not just the volunteer time. I mean, there's actual cost for those things. But yeah, well, I, hey, I mean, again, great that you're you're in doing that or passionate about it. And it's uh, so I have to ask too. I mean, uh, was that because I love hearing kind of the origin story, the background of how you became an MVP. You're a now a three-time yes. MVP. Three-time, yes. And so, I mean, so how how was that process for you? How did you find out about the program? How did you get started? So I have been contributing a lot to open source and I've been interacting with lots of MVPs in the process. Mm -hmm. uh, Jonas Rapp is one of the legends that I admire the most. And uh, it was like an inspiration. Uh, Natraj Yagneraman, who did the nomination basically for me, mm -hmm. also is a legend that I've been following a lot. And uh, one day I was helping Natraj with something naturally without asking for anything in, 
uh, exchange and he was like, hey, wait a minute, you are not an MVP yet. Like I always considered uh, the contributions that you were doing, I was thinking you were already an MVP and it was the reason why you were doing it, like because you were an MVP. And I was like, uh, no, like nobody has ever nominated me and I'm not, I've not been working towards getting the MVP award. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it, it is special for me because I would be the first Albanian MVP. So it has lots of value for me, but mm -hmm. it's not something that I've been working towards. It's something that came naturally, basically, from yeah. the community uh, contributions that I've been doing. And uh, it does have a lot of uh, load when you get the MVP because there are lots of meetings and stuff that and contributions that it, you yeah. it can be overwhelming it, it yeah. can feel overwhelming the, the amount of things but you, it just remind I, I'm sure you know this now three years in that you don't have to say yes to all of those calls and all of those meetings. oh yeah yeah you know, yeah I, do, do what you can. I, yeah I do only the ones that I feel like and contribute a little bit or yeah. I feel that are uh, in line with my pro developer, let's say, uh, skills, yeah. because there are lots of other things that I would just be cheating in a sense to get the information before yeah. the others, but I don't feel like I would add any value to that conversation. So I don't actually join those meetings. Yeah. Well, it's, um, I, I always like to, to point out too, I mean, hearing some of your, your story around this is that, you know, one, there's not any one particular path to becoming an MVP. Um, uh, you know, there, I mean, particularly with Microsoft's uh, uh, warming up to the open source community like 15 years ago, and they were, you know, staunchly against open source. We're yeah. seen as, you know, against that. But that those that change happened internally, and then they started doing more and more, and that's such a big part of, especially the business apps space. Um, that that open source part It's like more and more. I've run across MVPs or people that are out there that their primary content they're they're occasionally writing an article or a blog post or occasionally creating a video. Most of what they're doing is contributing like developing tools um and they're adding and they're active in github in the various projects they're participating in the patterns and practices calls the community calls around different areas they're contributing that way um in fact i interviewed a a woman who met her at the mvp summit earlier this year who had never presented in front of people had never doesn't have a blog had never created a video it was answering questions in forums and open source creating tools and scripts and adding to those projects. And it just got to be enough that somebody at Microsoft is like, hey, wait a second, They're like, why are you not an MVP? And then started that process. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, even myself, like I'm more focused, like local community and open source community. I am also, supporting a little bit in a discord channel that we have the level up our platform community uh and that's it like i blog like once or twice a year mm -hmm. only developer specific stuff of the platform i try to write uh rarely but try to give something that i think is of value more than just writing too many information because then it would be hard for me to keep the pace and hard for the others to get much value of that uh i don't know a yeah. fractured let's call it information because yeah. if you write too often then you will be writing too too many things in a sense so that information well. We could have a discussion around that since I am one month away from three years of daily blog posts. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, I understand your, your point. Um, and there's a lot of variety in what I, what I do. Um, but, 
but yeah, I mean, it, again, that's why it's, it's like, uh, but that is, I, I would say that, that that is not expected from a, any normal human to go and write that much. Um, and it, I'll tell you, even as a marketing guy, I mean, that's my background is marketing, but I've been in tech my entire career. Like I would not advise, like it's, it's not a, there, there's not extra SEO, uh, uh, you know, benefits out of that kind of frequency. I'm, I'm yeah. doing it more on a dare and to, uh, extend the lead over like the leaderboard over some others, <laughs> but but i enjoy it but it goes back to like what you said like I, but i do it because i enjoy it if i yeah. wasn't happy if it wasn't my hobby i wouldn't do it yeah and that's that's the main uh thing to point right like it has to be your hobby like you should do it because you enjoy doing it not because of some end goal or because you are forced to do it right and whenever we do it because we enjoy it, it's easy to achieve a lot more than we were expecting, right? right. Yep, Ex exactly. Well, let me let me ask you la last question here. Uh, you know, you so you've been an MVP long enough. Um, I'm sure you've been asked, like, hey, by by people that are saying, how can I become an MVP? Like, what is your advice to people that are interested in this path? They're doing things for the community, or maybe they're not yet. But what's your advice uh, that you give when people ask you that question? Usually I tell them, like, uh, start uh, seeing what other MVPs are doing. Find uh, something that inspires you, in a sense, and you would like to do so that you can inspire others. So if you don't find something that you enjoy, basically, they're... Uh, the audience will feel that you are doing it just for to reach a goal instead of doing it to inspire or to give some some kind of message, right? Mm -hmm. And my feeling is that most of the time, even uh, Microsoft can feel that you are doing those activities to reach some kind of goal, which might be just getting awarded right yeah but that's just the start it's not the goal right, right. getting yep. awarded yeah that's when a lot of things start that you were not expecting and a lot of uh new activities that you have to do or uh, most of the time i've seen that people have some the wrong idea of what being an mvp is and uh, see, as I mentioned, see it as some kind of goal, right? To reach it. Uh, for me, it's just like some recognition of our efforts. And uh, it, it is uh, really nice to have recognition, but it's not the best one because anyway, it's like a, it's an award for your community contributions, right? Like, if you want some uh, professional attribution from Microsoft, then the fast track, right? Yeah, yeah but yeah. fast track solution architect would be a lot better, right? Because yeah. it's a lot more professional and it's a recognition for your professional activities, right? Not right. for your community activities, right? So community is something that we do to help others that is a recognition of your professional achievements right yeah so well, that, whoever that's why likes it, that fast, fast track is great go and get your mct your microsoft certified trainer go and get the yeah. various certifications i mean there there is because you're right because ultimately the mvp it's an award for the community side of things it while i would say the all of us have technical depth. That's why we're doing the things that we're doing in the community, but it is not a certification. It doesn't mean that we are the experts on all things in that category. Um, yeah. may, maybe we are in some areas. Some of us are more generalists and not as specific there, but we're, but we're helping move things forward and supporting the community, which is hugely important.
It's why yeah. Microsoft supports this, has the program. Yeah. So. Well, I really appreciate it. It was great to to meet you and, and connect with you. Hopefully I'll see you at uh, a future European event if you're not over here. But are you planning to come to the MVP Summit this next year? I'm hoping I can make it, yes. Well, we'll have there to, are lots uh, of things to I, settle, but yeah. I'm hoping I can make it. Uh, and I know it's uh, in, in a lot of regions to to get a visa to come over to the U.S. Like it, it can be difficult and take time, but I hopefully uh, uh, you're able to make it over. I know it's a big event. There's a lot going on. And even if you made it over, we likely would not attend the same sessions, uh, participate in areas, but you know, uh, hey, stay in touch. Let's stay connected for sure. Yeah. Sounds and for like folks that want, pleasure. if people want to reach out to you, and I, of course, I've got all your social links. Where are you most active in social? Where can people find you? Uh, LinkedIn and the Discord channel that I mentioned previously. It's the two most active places that I'm on. And then obviously GitHub is my preferred uh place to exchange ideas and help the community excellent well i'll provide all the links it'll be out in the blog out on youtube and out in the podcast and so you can find uh, uh betim and and thank you so much for your time thank you christian it was a great pleasure wow.